This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now, another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Come with us to the American desert for a story of three desperate men, two prisoners, and a desert chase. Our play is entitled The Desert's Edge, and the first act curtain will rise after this important message. The woman in the Air Force is a woman who has found that it's smart to serve her country. She wears the trim WAF uniform, and she has a good future in a good outfit. If you are between 18 and 34... Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and ask for details. Be smart. Do it now. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Taylor, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Desert's Edge. <laughs> The man called Taylor lived on a little farm at the desert's edge. He lived alone with his chickens, his scrubby garden, and his desert flowers. Unlike most hermits, Taylor was neither old nor unfriendly. A tall, rangy man with a pleasant word for all who chanced to pass his way. Anyone who did might find him seated on his porch, reading one of the many books that cluttered up the place. Or they might hear the strains of some high-toned music coming from the big, handsome recorder that stood by the fireplace. Taylor was a character, all right. Not like other folks. Different. Get it into that bar there. Well, something to trouble, gentlemen? No trouble at all. You here alone? Yes. You, um... Think it's going to rain? Huh? Uh, what's your car doing in my barn? Well, I should say hidden in my barn. Is that okay, bun? Look, Doc, let's not stand out here and ask questions. Let's go inside where it's cooler. Yeah, this twilight air is bad for the health. Huh, what do you want? Hey, here, card. Shut up, both of you. Doc, you see this gun? I don't want to use it on you. Now, what do you say we all go inside? Um, wipe the dirt off your feet. Hey, ain't this the place? What you do, run a library for the Indians? <laughs> Shut your stupid face. Ed, look in there. And you, if you can stop trying to be a comedian, sit down by that window and watch the road. How can I watch the road, Bun? It's getting awful dark. When it gets dark, cars travel on the road just like they do in the daytime, only they use their headlights. And headlights can be seen a long way off, especially when the country's flat like this. Now sit down there and keep quiet. Well, on the run, eh? You guessed it. You probably heard all about it on the radio. No, no, I can't say I have since I don't have a radio. Yeah? Well, what's that over there? The recorder plays records. You're quite a character, ain't you? Nobody here, Bun. All right, good. Well, just so we understand each other, Doc, this is the pitch. We held up a bank in Flagstaff this morning. In the confusion, two guards happened to get themselves killed. That makes us murderers. Barmy here, that's nothing new to him. But right now, every fed and bull in the territory is out looking for us. That makes us desperate. That means we'll do anything to keep from getting caught. And that means you'll do as I say if you want to stay alive. Is that clear? Yes, yes, I think so. But there's one thing you better get clear. And what's that? I don't like being called Doc, especially by you. He doesn't like... Hey... He just... He just... <laughs> 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 
Uh, you ain't much of a cook, Doc. <laughs> if they'd known we were coming, he'd have baked the cake. <laughs> Getting sick of telling you to shut up. Don't you hit me again, Bond. I don't have to take that from you. You'll take anything from me that I give you. Now get out of here. Go on out of the porch and watch the road. Go on. I'd go easy on him, Bond. I want your advice, I'll ask it. Well, what are you grinning at? <laughs> You know, it's funny how different people resemble different animals. I was reading about your type this afternoon. Yeah? And what kind of an animal do I resemble? A jackal. No. You got it wrong. Fox is a better description. <laughs> and that's so you won't get it mixed up again. Hold it. <sighs> Man with a gun always holds the whip. I wonder what it would be like if I had a gun, too. Get up and clean off those dishes. Any liquor in this shack? No. Not a drop. Have a look around, Ed. Probably find a jug somewhere. Carl, there's a car coming up the road. Huh? Get all those dishes and things out of sight. Put them in that barrel quick. All right, Doc, this is up to you. We'll be in there. You make one mistake and you and whoever it is that's coming will get it. You haven't seen anybody... You don't know anything. Get rid of him. Don't go out on that porch. Stand by the door. Hey, what about these butts? Throw them in the barrel. In there, Bommy. Come on, Ed. Remember, Doc, no funny business. Oh. oh. You wanted something, miss? You startled me. I didn't see you standing there. If you're looking for the highway, go back on this road three miles till you come to the fort. Well, I'm not I... looking for the highway. I was looking for you, Mr. Taylor. Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, Want to keep? It's late. Well, I, I've driven a long way, and they said, well, I, I really won't take much of your time. What's it about? Well, my name is Carol Jennings. I'm with the magazine Report. You've heard of it? No. Well, we're interested in doing an article on this area and, and the people who live in it, and we thought maybe Ms. you... Jennings, I live here because I like being left alone. I live here because I don't like being bothered with foolish questions by foolish people. Oh, I'm sorry. They said in town that you like people. That you were different. Friendly. You can see they were wrong. Good night, Miss Jennings. Good night. Regular old bull, ain't you, Doc? Hey, he's a brute. You don't treat him nice at all. Hey, um, she doesn't seem to be able to get her car started. Stupid dame probably hasn't got the ignition turned on. What do you want me to do? Stay right where you are, no matter what. Well, she'll come back if she can't get it going. Tell her you don't know anything about cars. Then what? I'll decide that. Mr. Taylor! Go to the door, but don't go out. Uh, try turning on the ignition. I did that, but it won't start. Do you suppose you could help me? Well, I don't know anything about cars. You don't know anything about manners either, do you? Who invited who? Well, out what here? am I going to do? I'd go back and try it again. You probably flooded it. It is not flooded. There's something wrong. Well, I'll give you a blanket. You can spend the night in the back seat in the morning. Do you have a telephone? No. Well, are you just this rude naturally, or is it something you developed? I'll get the blanket. Where are you, manners, Doc? Let's invite the lady in. What did you hear? Ah, uh, that car radio isn't worth much. They think we headed north. We've got roadblocks set up all over the highways. Everybody and his brother are out looking for us. Good, let him look. It was our lucky day when we found this place. Couldn't ask for a better one. May I ask what you plan to do with me? Well, you are kind of a problem, babe. Somebody's going to start wondering where you are after a while. That's right. They know I came out here. Who's they? The people I talk to in town. My boss on the magazine. That's not so good for you. Not so good for Doc here, either. You're a fool, Bond. Keep your fear to yourself. Fear. Not afraid, huh? Why don't you try something, then? To die for nothing at your hands? Oh, no, I, I like living. I like it more than anything else I know. I'm not going to throw my life away to you for anything. That's for me to decide. If I want to end your life, I'll do it. With power, you become a god. The right over life and death. Pah. What do you like living for? You call this living? Out here in the middle of nowhere, desert, heat, nothing but dust and wind. What are all these books buying you? And that long hair music, living. <laughs> You're dead already and you don't know it. 
You can't be much older than me, but look at you. What have you got to show for a living? You've got it all figured out, haven't you, Bond? All figured out. How does it feel to be hunted? To know that no matter what you do or where you go, you'll always be hunted. That's really living, isn't it? A lot to look forward to. Bunk. We've got a suitcase full of greenbacks to look forward to. Enough to choke a herd of horses. And you'll never get a chance to spend it. You've got all the answers, haven't you? Well, I'll tell you how it feels to be hunted. Fine. I like it. Makes me feel good right here. Because I'm smarter than anybody who's hunting for me. They're looking for us up north, aren't they? That's just where they're supposed to be looking. I'm showing them. Me, Foxy Bond. <laughs> you think that's funny, huh? Well, there's a certain amount of grim humor in it, yes. Well, I'll give you something to really laugh about. Tomorrow about dawn, we're leaving here just like we came. You and the dame are staying. You won't be in such hot shape either. What are you, what are you going to do to us? He's not going to do anything to you, Miss Jennings. Don't you worry. He's right, I ain't. When they come out here looking for you, it'll be a plain as daylight. Guy living all by himself is apt to go off his rocker, especially out here. Put anyone off their rocker. What do you mean? My lady, I'm afraid I mean it's going to be a very simple case of murder. And suicide. Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Taylor in the proudly we hail production The Desert's Edge, will return in just a moment for the second act. Registered nurses, the United States Air Force Medical Service offers you a great opportunity to serve your country and further your own career. Yes, you can become a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances while you receive postgraduate training in anesthesia, operating room management and techniques, nursing administration, and other related fields. Nurses with special qualifications may train as flight nurses at the famous Air Force School of Aviation Medicine. For complete information, write to the Surgeon General, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. I'll repeat that address. The Surgeon General, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now, with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Taylor, we present the second act of The Desert's Edge. Hey, don't that wind never stop? Oh, sometimes it blows for days. It just started all of a sudden. Give a guy to Willie's. <laughs> you know, the Indians used to say it was the voices of haunted souls. Murderers crying for mercy forever. Ah, uh, don't try and feed me any of that bunk. No, no, listen, listen to it a minute. You can almost hear the words. I'll cut it out, shut up. Well, will they really do what that man said? Did your car break down, or was that a trick to get an interview out of me? No, it was no trick, honestly. Why? Hey, what are you two talking about? Yeah, the weather. Yeah, if you ain't careful, I'll wake up Bun. Yeah, he might not like that. Yeah, you come over here and sit where I can hear what you say. <laughs> we like it here. If you want to hear what we have to say, you come closer. You want to start eating slugs? You better lower your voice. You'll wake up Bun. Hey, one more peep out of you, I will wake him up. Now shut up, the both of you. getting sleepy. We've got to try and get out of here before he wakes up Ed. But how? Now, listen. I want you to get up and walk toward the window. Remember, don't get between us. Right. His attention will be drawn to you. I've got my hand on the poker. I'll throw it at him. Oh. Now, whatever happens, go out the door, turn to the left, and run. Right. Run right out into the desert. The desert? But... Still, even if the wind is kicking up, it's a clear night. You'll see a giant cactus on a little ridge. Uh -huh. Now go there and lie down behind it, and I'll join you. What are you going to do? Wring your neck if you don't stop asking questions. Now get up and go over toward that window. But I'm... Go on, go on. Hey, 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 where do you think you're going? Uh, I, I just wanted to look out. Uh, how... Look out, Carol. Hey! Oh! 
Run, Carol. Run, run. What's going on? Hey, get out here. Hey, what happened? Come on. What did, what did you do? <coughs> oh, wait a minute. I got my breath. I set the barn on fire. The barn? Sure, the car's in it. Yours is broken down. So they're trapped. Well, well, can't they fix mine? In this wind? No tools? And in the dark? Oh. Well, well, don't you have a car? Uh, just a pickup. But I've got the keys. Oh. That fire will attract attention. Well, when I get my breath, I'll, I'll thank you for saving my life. Yeah, well, it's not saved yet. What? It'll be light in another hour. After they finally can't get either my truck or your car started, they'll come looking for us. Oh. My keys are their only chance. They won't dare stay by the farm now. Well, how can they possibly find us with all this to hide in? Well, it's mostly flat. You can see a long way. From this mound, you can see for 20 miles. We've got to get started, and those shoes of yours weren't made for this kind of walking. No. Won't the wind blow up enough sand to hide us? No, it's only a, it's only a night wind. See, it'll die by daylight. Well, then I guess we're not safe yet. You can quote me in your magazine as saying we're not, not by a darn sight. If I ever get my hands on... Save it. Any luck, Bommy? Uh, distribute a shot, I think. Oh, my aching head. Too bad he didn't finish the job. It's your fault we're in this spot. Well, what do we do now? Well, we get out of here. It's getting light. That fire will have been seen. Yeah, but what do we get out of here on? A camel? Whoever comes out here to investigate will know that something has gone wrong. They've got a 30-mile drive back into town before they can tell anyone about it. Even after that, it's going to take a long time before anyone gets wise that we've been here. By then, we should be far enough away so it won't matter. Oh, Yeah. How? Look at this map. Yeah, put your light down here. Yeah. See this line? The railroad track. Got about a 20-mile hike. Wait for a fast freight. 20 miles across the desert? Are you nuts? You want to stay here? You want to walk down that road and be noticed? Who would ever look for us out there? What about the guy and the dame? They'll be looking for them, too. So will we. We can't travel fast with her. We'll take plenty of water. It's got clothes in there for walking in the desert. We'll wear them. I ain't going out in no desert. You'll go where I tell you. You'll stop going anywhere. I don't like it either. You can get lost awful easy, I've heard. With a map? Hey, what are you, yellow? It's only 20 miles. Well, maybe you got a better idea. Maybe I'll leave you two wonder boys here. Now, take it easy, Bud. We'll go. It's just that... None of us know nothing about the desert. What do you got to know? You know you got a suitcase full of dough? You know you got a murder rap hanging over you? And you know it ain't safe to stay here. Let's get this show on the road. What are you doing? Getting you a drink. A drink out of a cactus bush? That's right. Watch. Yeah, a regular fountain. <laughs> I can't believe it. Cactus bush stores water, or else it couldn't grow out here. Yeah. This isn't much of a cup, but it'll do. There. Yeah. Thanks. Not the clearest or the best tasting water, but it'll keep us alive. Oh. Where are we headed? For the highway. It's only about 15 miles north. Oh, I'm getting more of a story than I bargained for. Look, look back there. Oh. No, no, over by that ridge. A dust cloud. Is it them? Yeah, probably. See the um, buzzard circling? Uh, won't they see them over us? Yeah, I doubt if they'll know what it means, though. Oh, hadn't we better start moving again? Look, they seem to be heading southeast, right out into the desert. I wonder, you know, if they have a map, they may be heading for the railroad track. I hope they have to wait two weeks for a train. They'll wait longer than that, Carol. That track isn't used anymore. Oh. Bond, 
Let's stop and take a rest. This heat's killing yeah, me. Me too. Oh, my feet are falling off. Ah, what a couple of weaklings. I'm getting sick and... Wait. Wait a minute. Well, what do you know? See that dust? Them birds up there? Just like over us? It's them. Yeah, it's them. They're heading north. That's the way to the highway. Yeah, let them go for all I care. Let them go nothing. We can catch them fast. They can't be any more than a couple of miles ahead of us. So what? Just be wasting time. You think so? Yeah, I think so. You're ready to forgive them for getting us in this spot, huh? No, but this ain't the time to... What are you doing? You mugs have been dead wood on me since we started. We're dividing this stuff right now. Then I'm going my way, and you can go yours. That's okay with me. I'm getting sick and tired of taking orders from you. Yeah, me too. Fine. You two go catch your freight. I'm going to catch the guy who got me into this trouble. Nice fire, isn't it? You know, ever since I heard about you, I've wanted to ask you one question. Why do you live here like you do? <laughs> well, I could answer that by saying, why not? Well, it's not natural. Well, is there anything more natural about life in a city? Life anywhere in the world today. I found something out here. Something I never found there. I found some peace. How do you find peace? By running away from the world. <laughs> by running away far enough. No, you see, this life I'm living was an experiment. After the war, I came back to the old city life. Nothing was changed. Only I was. Maybe I lost my nerve. Maybe I was just fed up with everybody and everything. So I got this idea. Why not go back to fundamentals? Go back to the simple life. Somehow it seemed fitting that I pick a place on the edge of the desert because I saw my life as a desert. Of course, it wasn't easy at first. But then I began to, to notice things about me. Things we've gotten away from. You should see this place when it's in bloom. Because it does bloom. It isn't really a desert, as you think of it. Not dead, not lifeless. Just, just untouched. It has a beauty all its own. Even the desert wind, dry, mournful, hot, even that has... So you've gone back to nature and you've found your peace of mind. If the world's going to pot, it's only because we're letting it. We're not trying to improve things. Bond may have been right when he said that you'd stop living. You mean I should be in there pitching? Well, Maybe. But if you're sick in your heart, you can't pitch very much, you know. You need a cure. I was lucky. I found it. And what do you do? Stay out here and convalesce for the rest of your life? You're kind of hard on a man, aren't you? I don't like to see a man going to waste. Not a man like you. No, you flatter me. No, I'm not going to convalesce the rest of my life. I've been trying to put all this down on paper in a book. I started when I first came out here. It's a big book, and probably nobody will be interested in reading it. But when it's finished, I'll go back. And, as you say, uh, start pitching. <laughs> well, that makes a girl feel better. <laughs> Ain't it a shame? Ain't it a terrible shame I got to come along and spoil the whole thing? You ain't very bright building a fire like this. Lose your two friends? Nah, we parted company. They went to get a freight. <laughs> oh, you knew that line was abandoned. Sure. I couldn't let them walk all that way to find that out, so I put them both out of their misery. I'm going to be awful rich. Boxy Bond, eh? You'd think we'd be a lot more worried about seeing you, wouldn't you? You look all worn out, Foxy. Your water gone yet? You know, it's going to be a pleasure shooting you. I guess the heat dulls your brain. It'll do that, you know. Thought you said you were smart. You can't bluff, Doc, when you don't hold any cards. Why do you think I built this fire? To keep warm? Keep Miss Jennings warm? No. I built this fire because I wanted to see it. I wanted you to see it. I wanted you to come here just like you did. We've been watching you follow us for a long time. Yeah, I know. We're surrounded by Apaches. Your shooting, Ed and Bommy, attracted a lot of attention. Throw down that gun, Bond, or you'll be shot where you stand. You're surrounded, but not by Apaches. You don't fool me. <coughs> well, does that convince you, Bond? Why, you up, get you first. You all right, Taylor? 
Yeah. Yeah, we're all right, Sheriff. Bring your men. Come on in. Look, how about you, Carol? Oh, he, he almost shot you. Well, that's one mad dog we won't have to worry none about anymore. Yeah, poor Bond. He had it all figured out. He was smarter than anybody else. It felt good, too, he said. I wonder how it feels now. star, Conrad Nagel, will return with a word about next week's show in just a moment. Here's a special note for women. That list of the best-dressed women in America hasn't come out yet, but we can tell you right now that one girl is sure to be on it. She's the girl in that new blue uniform worn by women in the Air Force. But that girl in the WAF uniform is smart in another way, too. Maybe a better way, if you like. She's found a good career in a great outfit working on equal terms with men of the Air Force in hundreds of interesting, challenging jobs. She's found a service in which the way is open to the top by means of officer candidate schools that produce smart WAF officers. What's more, many girls with college degrees are coming into the WAF to go directly to officer candidate school and win commissions, another way of being smart. In short, the woman in your Air Force is the smartest woman of the year. How about you? Can you qualify? If you're between 18 and 34, ask your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for all the details. Do it now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. The Desert's Edge was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Friends, we hope you'll join us again next week over this same station for Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled Lady on the Run. It's a story about a very frightened young lady in rather frightening circumstances. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.